Hello there, and welcome to Montessori, Creativity, and the Meaning of Life. I am your host, Robin Norgren, and I am sharing with you some essays from a book entitled The Monk's Alphabet. And it was written by a modern-day monk uh, named Jeremy Driscoll, who resides at the Mount, Abbey, the Mount Angel Abbey in St. Benedict, Oregon. And what he has done is he's gone through the alphabet, A to Z, and he's taken certain topics and he's written his thoughts on it in a modern-day society. So, I hope you enjoy it. D is for design. There is a room in a house on the Via San Domenico in Rome where I am sometimes able to go and write. Like every part of this house, this room has its special genius, a nearly and precisely divine space with its own mood. Where I work, it is uncluttered and filled with a wonderful light that spills in through the tall window on my, on my left. All the details of the house are Danilo Parisio's designs, and every bit of it is handsome and fine. The proportions of everything, they are so learned, clearly fitted, by one who knows what he is doing. Out of this window, as I turn to rest my eyes and my mind from the work of composing at the computer, I can practice what I read the other day in Milozid's poem called The Only or this only. He spoke of wanting only one most precious thing, to see purely and simply. What makes the garden beyond the window such a joy to see from here is the way in which the window frames and holds what I see. It seems an odd thing to utter enthusiastic exclamations about, but I want to keep crying out in appreciation, saying, the proportions, the proportions. The mimosa tree, whose trunk is well beyond my sight, sends its bright yellow branches over for display directly before my window. Whether I turn to it directly or not, its yellow comes silently into my white room. And all through my day of writing, consciously as I turn to look, subconsciously as I turn back again to write, I am tinged within and without by the first colors of the spring. I am in a great house where, comfortable and warm, I work with all that is outside close in around me. Now the tree's branches are still and the light is waning. During the course of the day, the branches heavy with their bloom and with the frequent rains would bounce slowly up and down under the impulse of the soft and occasional winds. I would catch the movement out of the corner of my eye and turn toward it as if in answer to a summons. What a worthy distraction. Or was my work the distraction? In any case, the pleasure and beauty of the scene was enhanced by my seeing it through the noble proportions of the window's frame. The frame, utterly still and firm. Strong, tall, white lines with their comparatively narrow cross width. And in the open space beyond, the bouncing, heavy laden branches in their varied movements. Alive, alive, alive. The whole world is alive and moving. Not just me and the tree, but also the house and the room and the window. Also the clouds and the sky behind and above the tree. The roof and the tall and the dull red tiles that I espy through the live thicket beyond. We are all alive together and bound in varying, con in varying constellations by the live numbers of the proportions through which we see and touch each thing and the next. D is for dignity. There is a sense in which, also and always, we see ourselves from the outside and so make a certain impression on ourselves. For this reason, it is very important always to conduct oneself with dig dignity and grace. Even, 
and perhaps especially when alone. It is when we are alone that we probably make the strongest impression on ourselves. If I pull out dignity and grace only when I am with others, well, how authentic or full can it be? I am always making an impression on myself, so I ought to be careful. I am always making an impression on myself, and this is the same impression I should make on others. D is for directions. I am willing to be directed by my faith, and so I pause to get my directions straight again. The Bible teaches me that I am made in the image of God. And so why not look to that of which I am image to understand also myself? Concretely, it means I can look at Jesus, the image of the invisible God, and so come to understand myself. And the converse is true. If I do not look at him, I do not know myself.